So in today's video, we're gonna see if we can get some long exposure images in the middle of the day. Anytime you can take an image or a scene and use your skills as a photographer and settings in the camera to kind of transform that image into something that can't be seen with the naked eye, that's one way to make your images much more compelling. And long exposure photos are one of my favorite ways to do that. I mean, you can take a scene, as long as you have the right situation, the right weather conditions, you can take a scene that might even be a little boring and really transform it into something compelling. There are scenes like that are all over Instagram and social media. But most of the time we experience those as, you know, these low light dramatic scenes. But today, we're gonna see if we can make some long exposure images in the middle of the day. It's daytime here, it's about three o'clock, so the sun's pretty high in the sky. This is not an ideal time to shoot landscape photography. Usually we talk about golden hour and shooting at that time. This is not when you really wanna be out here, but I understand, like me, a lot of you are busy and you can't always get out at the right times, the perfect times for landscapes. So we're gonna see if we can get some long exposure images today in the middle of the day. The first thing I wanna talk about is the gear. Now, I'm a firm believer that when it comes to photography, you don't need the most expensive or the best gear, but there are some types of photography where you do need the right gear, and this is one of them. So, when it comes to the camera and the lens, let's talk about that first. You can really use any kind of camera as long as you have control over the shutter speed and the ability to attach filters to it. You can even buy adapters for an iPhone or other smartphone to use filters. So you really don't have too many limitations when it comes to the camera itself. As far as the lens goes, I like to use a wider angle lens, especially if you're using the clouds in your long exposure image. So if you want to catch movement in the sky, then a wide angle lens works better for that. But there really is no limitation other than your own creativity as far as what lens you want to use for this type of photography. The next thing you need is a really sturdy tripod. So when you're, anytime you're shooting longer than, you know, 1 50th of a second and you want to go into the, you know, even a half a second or one second or more of a shutter speed, a good tripod is important. You don't necessarily need a big, heavy, bulky tripod, just something that's gonna keep your camera steady. And that really depends on what, where you're shooting. So if you're shooting in kind of une, you know, sand or, or moving ground like that, a bigger, heavier, sturdier tripod's gonna be much more important than if you're shooting on pavement like I am now. So I'm actually shooting this video on a lighter tripod for the camera that's shooting the video. And I have my heavier tripod on my photography camera here. So it really depends on what your use case is for the tripod, but it's always better to invest, I think, in a good tripod once and you will have it for a long time. If you're interested in my recommendations for a good tripod, I put a link in the description to an article on photographygoals.com that I'll keep updated. The most important piece of gear you're gonna need for shooting long exposure photos in daylight is this, a strong ND filter. This is a 10 stop ND filter. I also have a six stop and a three stop that I can put on the camera. ND filters are like sunglasses for your lens. They're going to control the amount of light that's coming into the lens so that you can get those long exposures, 30 seconds or even more, that you need to create blur, motion blur in your images. The last thing I want to talk about is a little bit of an optional thing, it's, and that's an intervalometer. An intervalometer is something that you attach to the camera that controls the shutter speed. Most cameras will do up to 30 seconds internally, which means you just press the shutter button and you can set it to 30 seconds. But if you want to go more, uh, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, you need something else to work with your camera. And most cameras will let you do a time mode where you press it to start the shutter and press it again to release the shutter or a bulb mode where you hold down the shutter for as long as you want the exposure to be. In that case, you can just use a smartphone or uh, a tablet to time your exposure, but an intervalometer will have that all built in. You can just set it to something like four minutes and walk away and not worry about it. So it's optional, you can get away with it on most cameras by just using something to time your exposure, but it helps. Now let's talk about weather. So when you're shooting long exposures, obviously you want to get motion in your image. And 
you need something in the sky, if, if the sky is gonna be featured in your image, you need something in the sky to show that movement, and that usually means clouds. I like those days where you get those very defined chunks of clouds and some sky behind it. If it's completely overcast, you're not gonna really see much of anything, and if the sky is completely clear, well, there's nothing to move. So take a look at you know your weather reports and see if there's gonna be some light cloud cover, light to medium cloud cover, always seems to work best when you're shooting long exposures. So not all compositions are going to lend itself to long exposures. Yes, you want the motion like clouds moving in the sky or water flowing or something like that, but you also need stationary portions of the image as well. You can't just have motion or else it just looks like a blurry image. Now, there are some, maybe you can do like an abstract photo or something like that, but if you're really going for a landscape long exposure, you want that juxtaposition between the sharp stationary objects and the movement to create that sense of time passing or that sense of, of movement or duration of time. So look for objects, look for scenes where you can juxtapose the stationary parts of the scene to the movement. I like, in, in a situation like this, I like going to some place like a marina where we're at now, where there's, there's pillars in the ground, or there's boats, or the docks, and then the motion is going to be the water and the sky. So look for those kind of things. You can look for rocks in a stream, or rocks in the ocean. Anything like that where you have that stationary object sticking out from the movement is going to create a more compelling image. Now, of course, the same basic composition rules are going to apply to long exposure images as apply to any type of landscape image. And I'm not gonna go over that at length, but you know, your basic stuff, rule of thirds, you know, golden ratio, whatever your favorite composition rule is, you know, apply that break that rule, see what works, experiment with different shots. I never ever like to just go to a scene and shoot one shot and be done with it. Now, been talking a lot about getting set up, let's take some shots. So now let's talk about camera settings for shooting long exposures. Um, I'm gonna take the filters off. I'm, by the way, I'm using the Case magnetic filters really helpful in a situation like this because I'm going to be using some strong ND on here. I'm probably going to use the 10 stop and maybe the 3 stop on top of it to uh, get the right exposure. So it really helps that I can pop them on and off. And first, you want to get your compose your scene, figure out what your shot's going to be without the ND filter on it. So I'm looking at this scene and I've got a boat in the foreground. I've got the sky in the background. We have this, this bridge going across the scene as well. It creates a nice dynamic uh, angle in the scene and we also have this railing here that's going to be part of the scene as well. So I like all the elements of composition that I have and let's dive into the settings. I'm going to start with a aperture of f13. This is kind of where I like to live on this lens. It's pretty sharp. It's right in the middle of the lens so we're not getting any diffraction. If you go all the way up to f16 or f20 you're going to get some diffraction that's a little bit of blur in the image and while we want to create motion blur we don't want blur in the stationary parts of the image. So f13 is kind of where I like to live on these types of images. As far as shutter speed that's going to be the last thing I set. I keep it at an ISO of 100. That's my base ISO on, on this camera. So I want to increase the quality. I want the best quality possible. So base ISO is good. Um, some cameras have a low ISO. That can, can help you get a longer exposure if you need to. But um, in this case, I have the filters, so I don't need to do that. I'm looking at the image in live view, and what I'm going to do is zoom in to the foreground. And I'm going to make sure that's sharp. What I like to do is put the camera into autofocus and use the autofocus to get focus first. And then I'm going to switch it into manual focus and see if I need to fine tune it all. In this case, I think it did a pretty good job. And so now I zoom out so I can see the whole scene again. Now the camera's in manual focus, so I don't have to worry about it going out of focus when I hit the shutter speed or the, when I hit the shutter button. Uh, you just gotta be careful not to bump the, the focus ring at this point. So now let's talk about 
exposure. When it comes to shutter speed for long exposures, it's really a trial and error kind of thing. It depends on how fast the moving objects in your scene are moving. For instance, with the clouds today, they weren't moving really, really that slow, so I was in the minutes, one, two, three, even four minutes, in order to get some of that motion. If you're shooting a stream in, you know, moving at a pretty brisk speed, a long exposure for that might be one and a half seconds, or even a half a second, uh, before you start to see that motion blur to get, you know, kind of that glassy water. You could go into the, you know, up to 10 minutes even. Uh, I've seen long exposures up to 30 minutes. So what I would say is really experiment, see what looks best. It's not always the longest exposure. Sometimes if the exposure is too long, it just kind of obliterates the entire scene. You don't see any definition in the movement at all. But um, there's always that happy medium ground where you still see that definition in the moving objects, but you capture that movement, you capture that motion blur, and that's what you want to look for. So uh, as far as shutter speed goes, I can't tell you a specific shutter speed. You have to, uh, it really depends on how fast the moving objects are moving and what you want to create out of that scene. I want to see what the right exposure is on, without, without any filters. So looks like about 1 1 25th of a second. So I know I'm going to need at least the 10 stop because it's the middle of the day. We're shooting daylight ex long exposures here. So I'm going to count down 10 full stops from the 1 1 25th of a second. So that gives me 8 seconds. Let's pop the ND on there and see if that, if we got it right. And that looks pretty darn perfect. At this point, now that you kind of have the ballpark, you can make little subtle adjustments in the exposure time to make sure you get the right exposure. I like to use the histogram on live view to see how it looks. And like always with most landscape photography, I want to err on the side of underexposing just a little, making sure I capture all the highlights in the sky. So let's take this shot and see how it looks. The clouds aren't moving that fast today. So eight seconds really didn't give me much movement in the sky at all. So I'm gonna pop another ND filter on here. Um, this is a three stop, so that should give me three more stops. Now, uh, at this point, I might have to use my head for some math. I'm going three stops, so eight seconds. One more stop is gonna be 16 seconds. Another stop's gonna be 32 seconds. And a third stop's gonna be a minute. Um, minute and four seconds. But let's round it off to a minute. So that's beyond what my camera can do internally. So I'm gonna switch it to the time mode and I'm going to uh, use my tablet to, I have it down here, I'm gonna uh, use that for a timer. So let's start the exposure and start the stopwatch. Now, while we're waiting for the camera to go, there's actually someone in the scene paddle boarding across my scene here. But they're going fast enough that I don't think it's actually going to show up in this exposure. So that's one of the cool things with long exposures. If there's birds or people going by, um, if you're doing a long enough exposure, they aren't even going to show up. Almost time. And stop. So I just want to jump in here with a little tip. If you don't have an ND filter, there are some things you can do to kind of get to that long exposure you can uh, just crank up your aperture to the high, you know, the highest or smallest speed, smallest size aperture, which is going to be the largest number on your camera. The only problem with that is you're going to start to see little, little small blurs in the image. That's diffraction happening when you get to the, you know, the smallest aperture setting. Uh, use, you can also try using the low ISO setting. Some cameras come with that. That'll get you a little bit more uh, exposure. And the last way, and I'm not going to go into detail about this, there's definitely a lot of tutorials you can check out, and maybe I should do one, uh, but you can take a series of images with an intervalometer. You could take like, like you're shooting a time lapse and combine those images in Photoshop, and it'll actually create kind of an average of those images to call it, create an artificial motion blur. Look, that's not going to be as good as doing it in camera, but it is a cool thing to try if you, you know, just have your camera with you and you don't have any filters. Okay, so here's the results now for this photo. As you can see with the longer exposure, we got a lot more blur in the, in the clouds in the sky. The water got a little more glassy looking. So we've pushed it with two filters on here. We were able to push it to a minute. 
Now I want to take a look at another image that I actually shot before I even started filming this, and that was a four minute long exposure. When I first got here today, there were a lot more clouds in the sky than there are uh, than I, during the demonstration that I just shot, and uh, I shot this, this four minute exposure, and as you can see, more clouds, uh, even though they were very defined clouds, more clouds in the sky got, you know, there were more energy in the image, more movement, and it just, to me, came out to be a much more compelling image. Uh, so I definitely recommend experimenting with different shutter speeds. Um, throw on additional ND filters. It's okay to stack them. You know, if you have good filters, you're not going to see that much loss of image quality. So experiment with long exposures, especially it's a lot of fun to do during the day because, you know, you really have to um, push the limits of your knowledge and push the, you know, limits of your creativity because you can't just point it at a sunset and call it a day. That's why I really like this type of photography. You can do this anywhere, and you can take a boring daytime scene such as this and make it a little more compelling. So one thing to keep in mind when it comes to compositions, don't just shoot one composition. Change it up, move your tripod around, find different spots within your location, and shoot in different directions. For this particular shot here, I turned the camera around, shot in the opposite direction. There were more clouds. It just ended up being a really great image that I would never have even gotten if I didn't move my tripod around and try different things. So don't forget to move around and try different compositions.